I saw uh, when you when you or others watch the archive, uh, nothing there. George, George Smith, is that George Smith from from over in the West? I wonder. Anyway, whether it is or not, it's great to have you with us. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, so welcome everyone uh, this evening to this session, and especially welcome to to Kathleen Morris. And uh, Kathleen's going to be looking at supporting ESN learners using uh, using OneNote notebooks. Now we saw this, um, or I saw this, and some colleagues saw this a few months ago, and it was just brilliant. I thought, what a great resource! Uh, it was the sort of thing I thought I could use as a, an aid memoir if I'm not out and about seeing pupils, because uh, my mind isn't as bright as it used to be. So it would be great just to have a, a reference that you could just sort of plug into, and it's there. So it's a great resource. So you're in for a treat today, folks. So um, folk are still sort of coming in, but, but I think we'll, you're okay to, to get going, Kathleen, yeah? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Okay, so would you like to just start with your, maybe say a few words, who, who, who you are and what you do, and then we'll shift right. over to your presentation, is that okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, I'll just wait for that to load a second. Uh, good afternoon and thank you, Craig. Um, this afternoon, I'll share Fife's approach in using OneNote notebooks to provide access to ideas and resources, expanding the knowledge base across the authority as it's everyone's role to teach in the way that children learn most productively. Uh, I am a Support for Learning teacher and member of Fife's Assistive Technology Support Service. The teachers within this team have experience and hopefully a degree of expertise in using assistive technology to support pupils with additional support needs. In doing so, we work with staff to maximise pupils' learning and enhance engagement and it is within this role that the team combined to create the notebooks which I'm discussing today. Um, so we'll just yeah, I'll move just on. see I can put the slide this little left and that right arrow buttons down at the bottom. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. So um can I start by considering how much we used our literacy skills uh, so far today? Um and you, if you think back, we've checked news, we've emails, and we've collaborated, we've hopefully thought critically and problem solved as well. And a vast amount of this is in digital formats, both within the classroom and out with it. So our job is to prepare our learners and we must consider their future, both working and social environment, and prepare them with the skills that are required, both technical skills, but also confidence and reassurance that they can play a successful creative role, uh, opening up possibilities uh, and uh, we looked at this to share our experience. So this hopefully shows the flow of the webinar and the process from reflecting reasons for creating the content, what we were trying to achieve, who were our perceived audience, how we measure the impact, a keyword as we're all aware, uh, the benefits of using the OneNote format and then the actual doing, the making and sharing and that was obviously the best bit, I think. And then I'll go directly into the notebooks, opening up the content with the caveat that these are working documents, which uh, we all know means that they can be untidy and incomplete. So, um, and then we'll go back to reflecting uh, where we'd want to go with the next steps and how we could make improvements. So, okay, would you like me to move on to the next slide or? Um... Next, uh -huh. yes, that would be super. Um, and the image here um, may represent both the teacher and parent who can spend evenings on a time-consuming search for information and resources. And as I certainly know, it's so easy to deviate into other avenues which may or may not be productive. Uh, I won't go into details of which avenues I go into, but, but it, there's always so much to see and learn. It also represents uh, the learner who is uh, perhaps being provided with a device but without the personalization of support that's required and therefore doesn't have the knowledge or awareness of the supports that would be beneficial to enhance his or her learning. And if we move on again, Craig. Yep. Yeah. And 
we know that the use of assistive technology within learning is an ever rising curve um, with the rise of iPads with their built in accessibility features to the huge rise in internet use and rollout of online working through Office 365. And how do we keep up to ensure that learners are in possession of these skills to participate, uh, that they have the tools, that they get the appropriate support at the appropriate time to evaluate the information, um, and using these tools productively. So um, all the part of being part of a wider community and being creative and collaborating with your colleagues, all these things that we do, the, the tools can help with. Uh, I will say that to read with understanding and compose text independently, and I may use that word quite often, as it is increasingly important. OK. Um, so we knew what we wanted to do, the rationale. Um, and again, this independence is key to successful learning, removing that passive waiting time. And it's similar for teacher, teachers. We're providing a focus point for information that will be updated and enhanced. And to do this, it has to be easy to find and use, and hence the OneNote. And as you've signed up to this webinar, I have a certain assumption that there's a recognition of the importance of assistive technology. So we won't go into that. But promoting the use of ICT in removing barriers is a continuous process. And again, Craig. Yep. Thank you. This is great having a personal assistant. <laughs> right. uh, this quote uh, is used to reinforce that all children may use Office 365, but the benefits to the learner with an additional support need can be so impactful. Integrating technology into teaching and learning is not a choice we have. We have to provide this equity of opportunity. And again, we'll move to the audience stage. So um, after considering the why and the who came next, this is like a primary one writing lesson, but we aim to be as inclusive to all practitioners. Fife uses the stage process of universal, additional, and intensive supports. And some of these features uh, expected at the universal level are on the right of the screen. So getting content to the user where they are Interacting with their day-to-day -day work is an important factor. And the rollout began by highlighting this resource to head teachers and support for learning staff, which then could be demonstrated to their school staff. And opportunities were taken to share with newly qualified teachers and LS through induction meetings. And then I'll just show you a, a sample page. Um, this, the schools are accustomed to the Higgias, the How Good Is Our School process, and level five illustrations. So we considered how they could audit their use of assistive technology. Um, we considered frameworks, illustrations of good practice, and challenge questions were posed. And hyperlinked pages were included to resources which could support. And another sample page. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the need to find uh, information quickly and efficiently this is kind of key to whatever we're saying today is integral to the successful usage. So contents pages were created using the OneTastic add-in. This was before Windows 10. And the pages could be emailed and copied to their own or school notebooks. So also useful when team members are in direct conversation in schools. And the information is given at the time, which saves on the I'll get back to you moments and the burden of to do's or photocopying. And just as Craig said, our uh, memories of what suggestions we would put are sometimes uh, lacking at the time. So it's really handy for, for that side as well. Um, and we've moved to the impact quotes. And again, this is the impact of using assistive technology uh, for learners was gathered. And these statements were typical. Uh, fits with the model of being least intrusive and fulfilling inclusion. And that was motivating uh, for learners, providing them with digitally accessible reading material. 
And again, going back, there, there was no stigma about using uh, an iPad or uh, such like. And research is, just shows that um, in the 21st century, literacy increasingly points to the prevalence of digital texts. And so they require digital skills to do that. So um, a few more to go, and then we'll go into the, the actual notebooks. So why use OneNote? And the OneNote format makes the information available on the teacher's desktop and at a time of their choosing, whichever time is available to them. Uh, the need to go online via Glow can be limited to only once, um, as Fife uh, doesn't use the Glow email facility as yet. We have it, but uh, we still have a Fife-based one. So uh, it can be... You can open the OneNote in the app and pin to the taskbar. The format's clear. It's a digital binder or a folder so that can be visualised and thus understood. And it's searchable and continually, time permitting, updated directly to their desktop and new information appearing in a bold font. So again, everyone's informed. Uh, the comparison with a list of Word files is one I make. Um, they may be in folders, but often due to time, um, you might select only a few from the top. And searching is not easy, and updating is more challenging, as without going in to check, you may be unaware of new additions. So moving on to how do we create the content. Um, when sharing the no notebooks, um, the amount of information can lead to the assumption that creating the notebooks must be daunting. It, I can assure you it wasn't. But um, We looked both nationally and further afield. And we decided on the section headings or tabs and then added pages. We agreed uniformity of fonts, etc. and placed documents within tables to structure or stabilize the files. There was less movement when the images were added. And the send to OneNote, both as a print option and on email, is a particularly useful function. Um, so that when information came up uh, or you needed to take a screen clipping, we could do it that way or use the Windows Shift and S function. And our advice, and I say I will be going into the notebooks very shortly, the points to consider. Um, Craig, you want to move on? Yeah, sure. Move on one. Sorry. Um, we just would recommend that you, if when you're creating your notebook, create it within Glow, um, either within the plus sign on the OneDrive or the waffle, uh, those three by three dots. I know some people call them hamburgers as well, but whatever <laughs> you, you find. Uh, keep the tab heading short for visibility, although that's not quite so important in Windows 10, as they've changed the format to look more similar to the iPad format. Um, the OneNote is searchable through typing keywords into the search box, but personalising the tags would also be very useful in hindsight. Um, provide step-by-step -step diagrams to enable new Glow users uh, to find them. And finally, set a time uh, side time to update, amend, and add. And if sharing, regular relaunching events uh, help keep them keep them relevant. And the last slide before I move into the, okay. the um, this was our site traffic data. Again, it's, it may not be uh, relevant to, to many, but if you're creating something for sharing and a wider part, um, this last point of sharing within a professional learning community events is highlighted on uh, this slide. The peaks in, in order when we shared with different groups, um, we had uh, different uh, teams, uh, management, learning support. Uh, you can also see the holiday times when people have naturally disengaged. <laughs> and again, we really encouraged people to open in the app so that um, it was pinned to the desktop. Um, so that will not show in this data. Now, if um, I can go over to the desktop um, so and screen, if you just share my share screen. Share your screen. Drop down, great. All right. And right, are you okay? 
Yeah, and then share my screen. There should be an option to share my screen again. Oh, yes, right. Share Sorry. Right. That's it, great. That's, That's it. it. Right. And then could you, could you maximize it, Kathleen? Just the actual um, OneNote. Yeah, could you make it, it is. Flat? It is at it the is. moment. Mm -hmm. okay, yeah, um, I'll, I'll close. I'll close the parts as as we go through it. So, um, for those that aren't used to um, the notebooks, you have your notebooks that you've created within Glow down the side, um, and I'll show you the literacy resource notebook. The tabs or the section headings are down here, and um, and there's our pages. So we created a welcome page and we put the, the advice as to how to get there so that we hoped our support for learning staff would share that with colleagues. Um, go into the, I'll just kind of go through it, um, if that's OK. Um, the, the mouse skills or whatever that we have here, we've got, we can click and uh, make sub pages. Um, we have the, the keyboard skills, um, keyboard websites. So again, it was the direct link to a resource that people could use the hyperlinks to access. Um, we also did, well, what are the steps to engage with text? And that was where the recordable devices, etc., came in. Um, we thought about how we access text. And this is the bit about um, how it requires updating because things change, etc. You'll see co-writer and uh, such like there as well. And we just move down, the supports for learning. So we made some of our own resources, but we also, remember I said it's something about using tags. This is the to-do part that we tagged, so we would find out which bits to do. And then straight away it can be updated. Craig will recognize this, and we've put the link into the word prediction, which he just shared with us the other day. Um, on to literacy, this is what the contents page looked like. Um, we have obviously a lot of cl uh, clicker, um, from training videos to the iPads, um, whatever the, the companies were providing for us. And I know Clara's with us, and um, we'll certainly be adding that to um, the list as well. This is on my to-do list. Um, we looked at, sorry, whoops, the pages. Can you still see okay or do I need to? Yeah, it's fine, uh, think, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so my colleagues would make um, cheat sheets, uh, as, you, as you do, as to how to do it for new members of staff aware that you're trying to always share our experience, um, comparing what would whether we to use uh, pages, whether to use Keynote, um, the different impacts that they have, um, trying to not make it things too wordy, as we're aware that, um, sorry, I have to slide up again. <laughs> um, as people, we realize, do not have time. So we would put things in, if you want to find out more, to go directly to the supports that are out there. Um, the websites, again, you could be forever trying to fill these. Um, but again, we gave people a, a start and we look for um, practitioners to actually tell us what they are using. And so we constantly update that. Um, and then we have the general ones, ICT games, etc. cetera, um, all those. Um, the apps, again, and you see, again, a reason of, iOS 11 would need to update, but we put the videos directly in how to do these things. Um, is that sort of clear as to where we're going with that? And um, then I say we would say cause and effect apps that you could use. Um, Book Creator, we really loved. Um, again, I'll move on to the nursery. I'm aware of time. Uh, we made posters um, for the nursery. Uh, I will make that one so you can see that you can see it in full screen um, with hyperlinks as well. Um, and then we, we have recordable devices, etc., as well. 
uh, and pages, pages and pages. Uh, we're also putting our CPD um, in there as well, uh, so that the resources that we do when we're going out on training can be accessed directly. Again, trying to get more and more people to use the notebooks. I'll move on to the numeracy one as I'm aware of time. Um, That's okay. okay. Um, the curriculum uh, mapping was our kind of general ones. We really liked um, uh, Enrich and the Highland Maths. So we have put links onto there. Again, we, we realize there's a, a huge range of experience within our authority. So what some people use how do we share that before that, you know, does it depend on which school you're in, who you're speaking to? So we have this kind of range. And then New Zealand maths um, is, again, another another uh, useful one. Um, to show you the number sense, I think I mentioned before we're trying to get more images of, and personalizing things so that more Fife-based, it would uh, uh, will be good to have people voice in here. Um, so again, and again, thinking of um, we're not wanting just practice apps, it's ones that actually, or uh, websites, it's ones that will actually promote the learning rather than you know the, the, you know the skill and you're just practicing that the kind of differentiation there. Um, so there's a whole lot within that. Uh, and again, American ones, um, but it fitted in with how we teach our maths uh, with conceptual numeracy. Um, and doorway, of course, comes into it. Um, there's add and subtract. And again, these are um, free um, apps. These were German ones that we could uh, say copy and paste onto your desktop um, and you can um, you can access this free. It's also an iPad app, but you can have it on your computer. Um, again, same sort of thing. Where are they going? What are they doing as early level, first level? Um, number lines, um, maths on the net, hyperlinking the page, trying to make it as, as easy as possible for people just to go, I've suddenly got a class. What am I going to do with them? I could go there, uh, that idea. Um, you'll see on the, um, that there is a vast amount. Um, the hit the button's always popular. Um, and we do have to keep checking that they do still work. Uh, I'll just move on to measures, quite nice to look at. Uh, again, is it size? It could be that. Uh, shape, lots of nice things in shape, going co-virtual manipulatives, um, and that's how we we went there. Uh, could we go back for a second onto the presentation? And, yeah. and I'll just go to the last um, slide and then take any questions. Nothing too Let hard. Do I need to? Yeah. And then the next, the next okay. slide. The next yeah. So yeah. this was our next steps. As you can see, add pupil voice in. Um, it's always um, a good idea, but you know, you're, it's time. It's just time that stops you from doing that. Embed our own video material. Um, because we, as you recognize, video and finding out to do something, screen uh, recordings would be really useful. Um, and our images of best practice. Um, we've had to relaunch following the Windows 10 rollout um, because people are getting new machines, they've lost their, the, the link. So we're doing that at the moment. And we just have a plan to update. Um, and we think we might have a frequently asked questions section. Um, and sharing pages, but we'll willingly take any advice. <laughs> Can I put that over to questions now? Or? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's certainly a resource that's, that's constantly evolving, isn't it? It's uh, and the ever evolving. 
the notebooks are by no means complete and as I sit here I'm aware of a wealth of new pages to be included which is the nature of using technology in education but um, thank you for your time and to Craig and Shirley and at call for allowing me the opportunity to present this afternoon. It's a fabulous resource. So can can we get it? I mean, is, is it sort of thing you can share with other local authorities or other people, or is it just within Fife that no, it's, it's used? No, if you um, I have my email on the first slide, um, so if you actually email, I'm sure we will get a way to get it. Okay. I think there was problems before because it's quite a large file, but um, yes, the answer is yes. So if sure. um, uh, if you tell me what it is, Kathleen, I could just pop it, oh, pop right. your email into Kathleen so Kathleen dot Morris. Kathleen dot Morris at fife dot gov uk. Fife dot gov dot uk. So Kathleen dot Morris at fife dot gov uk. How's that? Yep, that's perfect. Uh -huh. And Mike's asking, how how do staff access the OneNote the uh, notebook directly? Um, they go into Glow. And the, um, we have a, a Support for Learners hub uh, within GLOW and the notebooks are there and once they open it there, the, the, the sign comes up to open an app and so they open an app, it immediately downloads onto their machine and that's how it's there for the next time they open it. They just have to, and we suggest um, Pin the note, uh, one note to your taskbar so it's there, and um, that's how you access it. So you can have as many I, I, or as few as you as you like. I imagine you must be very popular among five uh, teachers because well, it's uh, such. It's, it's I wouldn't just like for, to say. One resource you can just access. <laughs> that's Does it. anyone have the internet? <laughs> Does anyone have uh, any more questions for, for Kathleen? Val? Val is typing? I think Val's maybe seen this before, but it's good she could attend. It looks fabulous. It is fabulous. Yeah, it looks and is fabulous. Thank you. Thanks, Val. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's a real wealth of information. It's uh, and and again, as, as Kathleen said, you know, the beauty of OneNote is, is it's got such a search, good search facility. So, you know, if you're just thinking of the keywords, if you're in a situation where you need to tell some somebody about something, you just think of the keywords, type them in, and it and it brings up. Yeah, I thought about that as well. The question that Mike's asking: How long has it taken to 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 do it, Kathleen? Well. Um, because we're, um, the members of our team are also practicing teachers, we also had uh, one notes, our own one notes that we used. So we could just do copy and move or copy uh, the page into the, the notebook, um, or we're aware of the resource, or um, you know the Apple supports, or um, Clicker videos. So it didn't really take so long. Um, it's finding time to keep going back to them to make sure that um, website links are still um, yeah, working, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the actual creation um, wasn't wasn't so bad. <laughs> oh, good. Um, well, it's uh, going on for half past, so I think we'll close the session now. So just thanks to everyone for joining today. Um, and uh, thank you to Kathleen for such an informative and interesting session and uh, a great resource. Thanks very much. Thank you. And uh, we'll, we'll record this. This has been recorded and we'll have it on the uh, call website as an archive for the next couple of days. OK, so thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining. Thanks. Thanks, Kathleen. Thank you for all those lovely comments, too. Oh, it's OK.